Um, hi, I'm Joan, and I've been doing 3D graphics for quite a while, like 28 years. So um, I really like it, and I really like talking about my work. Um, OpenGL stands for Open Graphic uh, Shading Language. It's an APA, API for rendering in 2D and 3D graphics. Um, the API interfaces with uh, what's called a GPU, which is the Graphic Programming Unit. Uh, it used to be the video card, but now the GPU is on a chip. Um, and I'm just going to go fast through it. Uh, OpenGL, you send uh, triangles. Your model is converted into triangles, and those triangles are converted into pixels. Um, the next slide is talking about, I started in OpenGL before it was a standard, and it was a fixed function uh, API, and for uh, the lights were, uh, were, were uh, fixed, uh, solid fixed, and it was, what it did was uh, shade your object per vertex and then interpolated the pixels between there. But now OpenGL is programmable and you're able to program each vertex and each pixel, which uh, you see the difference there. Um, the GPU has thousands of uh, multiprocessors or cores and they're much smaller than the CPU. They're dedicated to do complex computations, uh, especially uh, matrix math and vertex math. Um, and what this means is that um, you can uh, input your model triangles and do the same program on every single pixel in um, synchronously, in parallel. For example, um, one of the uh, equations in uh, diffuse lighting is M dot L. And what that means is the normal to the certain pixel, that vector, um, the cosine of that vector, and the vector from the light to the pixel you can run that program on thousands of pixels at a time. And so you get this calculation in microseconds, uh, which is um, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, OK. Now I'm going to talk about my career. I started in Dublin, and uh, at one point I did embedded programming on a video card that implemented OpenGL. And when that was done, I moved to Toronto and worked for this cool company called Alias that made animation software. This is the cool jacket that they gave us when it was <laughs> out. And um, it did uh, started with you know, was used in Terminator and Jurassic Park. Uh, but when I got there, we started a new animation uh, software project called Maya. And if you were in animation or games, you know about this. And when the GPU became programmable, at that time it was CG, called CG, and it was like assembly language. And I worked on Maya and did hardware rendering. The software rendering, um, it can take minutes. It can take hours. So we did hardware rendering in seconds. And this, it was the same quality as uh, um, software renderer. And after that, I moved to LA. And I worked for a company called Rhythm Do. It's an animation and special effects company. And that's when OpenGL became truly programmable. You could program, <laughs> run a program for each vertex and each uh, pixel. 
which meant that for a simple lighting, you could do a transform on every single vertex, then that would be rasterized into pixels, and then you could do the lighting equation on every pixel with thousands of processors, which is really fast. And you could do it, I could do this in real time. My first assignment was on Narnia, and that was just to bring um, everything into um, real life speed. So the first thing I did was the lighting. And I copied, did lighting shaders that were uh, mathematically equivalent to the software renders. And instead of just being able to have eight lights, you could have as many as you wanted. And the artists were able to go frame by frame and actually see what they wanted instead of waiting for the software render, which could take hours. Uh, Aslan took a day to render a scene. And um, what happened was a software rent, we had what's called a rendering farm with hundreds of thousands, I don't know how many computers all running the software rendering. So there was long wait times for the artists to see what they were doing. Whereas this, now they could actually, this is Vudo, the software program that I wrote the shaders for. Here's Aslan with um, lighting and textures. And this is very pixelated because I couldn't get anything better, but um, how do I run the video? Okay, that's Aslan. This is Vudo with the muscles, and this is uh, Aslan with all its hair. And I wanted to get this right. Uh, oh, I forgot. I had how many thousands of hairs there were, and 15 different types of hairs, which I didn't work on. I worked on the the lighting. Um, now I'm going to talk about some of the shaders I worked on. I worked on Happy Feet. Um, Let me know if you want to play the video. I'm just yeah. hiding here. So the shader I wrote for this was a texture shade, uh, shader. Uh, the artist gave me a scene with just Wilbur in it and then put patches of textures on his face. Like the nose is one texture and there were patches on different parts of his face. And so what I did was I... Um, um, I created a shader that textured his face and stitched it so when Wilbur is talking, there's not gaps in this. And before this, the artist would again have to wait for the software renderer, you know, which is in the render farm, and it might not be top priority. Uh, this next video was Happy Feet. And the shader I did for this was a reflection shader. The artist wanted to see the reflection in the water of the tower and the, the scene only had the tower and the penguin with the yellow stuff on. So what I did was take an image from the camera and store it in texture memory and then take that texture memory and project it from another angle. So even though this is the projection, you can't see it here in the final scene, uh, you can move the camera and see the reflections of the penguin in the tower. Um, 
Another shader I worked on was Night at the Museum. And this was a composite uh, shader. And what I did was take the 2D video of this actor and the 3D uh, generated character of the monkey. I actually was done a different scene, but this was used for it, where it was a woolly mammoth. And so I used what's called a depth buffer to figure out where the animal was in front of or behind uh, or side of this actor here. And um, those are just a few of the fun times I had doing OpenGL on video cards in the GPU. And that's it. All right.